I'm Jordan Carlos, and welcome to Can We Talk About This? All my life I had to fight. In 1985, Steven Spielberg broke box office records, not with a killer shark or a magic alien, but with an adaptation of a Pulitzer Prize winning novel starring an all black cast. Show me that pretty smile. With me to revisit The Color Purple is writer extraordinaire, Roxane Gay. When was the first time you watched The Color Purple? I think I originally saw it in theaters. It was one of the first times I had ever seen a movie about black women. It blew my mind. I think you're beautiful. The Color Purple demonstrated that black women can lead a narrative and they can do so beautifully and powerfully. Mm. I just loved it. This life be over soon. Heaven lasts always. Do you feel it still holds up after all these years? It absolutely holds up. It's as timely as it ever was. I think my opinions have become more nuanced. That's the thing about the, the films that we love. There is, it's, it's the sweet and sour of it all. You know, the sweet is a movie that centers black women. The sour is that a white man directed it. <laughs> Yes. And the sour is that it didn't win any Oscars, but things are changing for the better, and we are seeing more black directors, and I think that's critically important. Can we talk about firsts? It's the first big budget adaptation of a novel by a black author. First black producer nominated for Best Picture, Quincy Jones. Whoopi and Oprah's first film. People forget how many firsts this movie accomplished because we're still accomplishing firsts. Things gonna be changing around here, too. How do you think? The Color Purple changed the game at the box office. It showed that Black people can lead a film that will earn a lot of money. And it has been proven time and again, and every single time it happens, white Hollywood throws their hands up and says, oh my God, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, they're going to get the message. Let's talk about um, representation on screen. I had never seen uh, a story about a uh, queer relationship like this, especially among black women. How important do you think it was? I think it was incredibly important. I think this was the first time I saw two women kiss hmm. ever. And I loved it. I was shocked. And there was some secret part of me that thought, I want to do that. <laughs> I wouldn't call it queer representation by any stretch of the imagination, but there was so little representation back then, especially for black lesbians, that like that is what had to stand in the place of queer representation. At its foundation, The Color Purple uh, is, of course, about women getting power. How important is it for women to see stories like this? Yeah, I think it's important for everyone to see stories like that. And for me, it just reinforced what I already knew about the relationships between Black women in terms of what I saw in my own family. And I loved that this movie highlighted those relationships in ways that were authentic. We have a tradition in Black America where we laugh to keep from crying. Yes. There's an inside joke in, in the film when Celie does this. Everything you've done to me, already done to you. <laughs> we all know that and we all kind of laugh at it. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, the movie is so traumatic. Do we undercut that by using humor to enjoy it all the more? We don't undercut the trauma. The trauma is so overwhelming that you need something to cope with it and to remember that joy is as important as suffering. That we have taken these cultural touchstones from a film that is incredibly painful, yes. I think speaks to the power of resilience. I think it's entirely a positive thing and a useful thing. Roxane Gay, uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, Jordan. This was great. This has been Can We Talk About This? I'm Jordan Carlos. Enjoy the movie.